we're basically taking old work that has marks on them that are unfinished and painting over them with new inspiring those are half done already and this is a palette I wanted to work with today because look at how very different that is I mean yes it's yellow blue and red but what we're doing is 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 testing out a very warm red we've been using quinacridone magenta or primary magenta and those are cool reds which means instead of having yellow in them they lean more towards blue so this one's very warm and then we have a very very cool blue Turquoise is a very cool blue. That means it's got a lot of the green undertones in it. And then what happens is when you mix those two is you make these really ruddy colors and not a real true purple, but it's really beautiful because look at what happens when you mix it um, with white. So we have this really beautiful palette. We're going to test it out. That's a lot of green for me, but why not? Let's play. So we got to pick ourselves. By the way, this is filled with all different kinds of samples of different colors. You can make a color wheel any which way you want. There's a beautiful, I should try that one one time too. That's probably better for landscape. But you know, with a color wheel, you can pick a limited palette of anything. And that's my color philosophy because you're going to create much uh, more harmonious pieces. So let's try out, I'm thinking either that one. That's so pretty. I don't even think that I want to paint over that. That was like a tester on how to do texture. How about, we'll keep it simple. Let's do either that or the one of these blacks yeah let's just do one of those every day it's a new challenge so those are just old scraps good to paint on the old scraps you guys and then here's our colors Hansa yellow medium which you can use cadmium yellow medium or even um so the Hansa I don't think they make anymore so primary yellow would probably work just fine Here's our Pyrol Red Light. So Cadmium Red Light is also on that kind of orangey yellow side. Warm red. And this turquoise, which most of you adore turquoise, right? I haven't been using blue much lately, but I think I could get back into turquoise. All right, and one, just one, and I want to mix up. Actually, you know what I want to do is I want to put a little bit of gesso on that. Well, if that's the case, let me just use this because this has got... This has got some good texture on it. Let's just do that. And we can start it out by, instead of using my um, graphite pencil, I'm just going to make, this is going to get really watery. So I'm making an inky paint. If you have any questions, please ask. And I'm going to um, create kind of like some marks that are like gesturally thinking of making them into florals. See, so well, I don't know what this is going to be, but I'm making some marks. That gives it like just some sort of texture underneath, color underneath. I'm actually drawing this really fast by just using my rag. So I'm going to mix a couple of colors here first. Let's mix some green. I just need a teeny bit of that turquoise and look at how quickly I make green. There's some green. I just want to show you how easy it is. And we can make a darker green or a, 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 definitely a blue green. And we'll mix that in with this and that'll kind of like just be in the background as we build up our florals on top of it so i don't come in here with a plan every day by the way this is just years of painting and if you do this on a regular basis next thing you know you will have done the 100 day project without even meaning to do the 100 day project funny huh i'm kind of getting this in here because i want it to be a little bit like it's the sky so if we were to have a floral garden of some sort, we'll let some of that yellow come through. We'll get this green in here. And I'm gonna bring in a little bit of red into that because what happens is when we get that olive color that I love so much, there we go. More yellow, make it bright. You guys following along? Have you all decided that you don't need every color under the sun? I hope that's what you've realized is that the beauty of color mixing is that you don't have to buy every paint. You really don't. Okay. Now I've made myself thoroughly a nice big mess here. It needs to dry. I also can just make marks through it. Um, isn't that gorgeous? Limited color palettes are amazing. All right, so that needs to dry and then we are gonna be able to layer. That's the beauty of acrylic is it's not gonna pull it up once it's dry. So my quick fix, a lot of times I just have my blow dryer. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's such really pretty texture on this because of what was underneath. 
And this is the reason why I love to use old pieces is because whatever was there is going to kind of play part of the story. All right, I'm getting a fresh brush. We're going to mix up some peaches and pinks. Remember, I've got this little thing going here. So I want to play with, um, well, I just love how it looks plain. So it's got so much texture. We might have our poppies in here today, and it looks like I'm going to be making really abstract work, which is great because I haven't really worked in abstract in a while. I mean, like, I have, but I mean, I haven't pushed myself really as much as I want to. Look at this. How fun. Making all those oranges and peaches. It's, we need a lot of white. A lot more white than you'll ever believe you need. And I do mix with my brush, which is probably not what you're supposed to do. But here I am, you know, more than a decade into this career. And I'm not doing it right. So I'm not going to make you do it right. <laughs> um, let's see. How do I want to do it? I'm looking at composition and just trying to get in here and just allow it to be, I guess. This has become an intuitive process for me, but the intuitive process happens after years and years of painting and playing and, and working on these things without, you know, preconceived notions of of what it's got to be until it kind of starts developing. I, I learn I love learning my color and composition and design, um, learning how my hand works, what motion I want to make when I'm when I'm making the mark. So yeah. All right. Um I want here. I'm just brushing this off on the side you can't see. There we go. Now I have less paint on my brush. Cuz I want to come in here with more. I'm really making very loose gesture marks. Hmm. Where do I want to go? I think I want to pull it down. I like the idea of Just want to get some light going on in here, but that might not have been the right choice. Let me brush it down. So with a dry brush, I can kind of blend it out. Look at how it... You guys are going to get to watch me struggle here because I'm way out of my comfort zone with this piece. <laughs> Why? Because I haven't used these colors in forever. And so I'm trying to decide, how do I like it to look? All right, it's coming along. It's fine. It's fine. Have confidence to get through it. Look, everything goes through its own ugly stage. I'm not worried about it, except for the fact that I get to do this so excitingly on camera for you. I want to show you, like, I'm going to bring in some more. Um, I do want it to be a little more earthy. So if you have questions as we go, please ask. But I'm going to bring in some more line work by using this smaller brush. So I guess I'm going to do something that looks a little bit more like green, maybe leaves, marks. Let's get some white over here. Huh, maybe it'll work over here. I like just playing with whatever colors are left and kind of seeing what's going to happen. There we go. Let's see. So, do you want it more pale minty color? Add white. You want it more lime? Add yellow. These are the things that only practice and time will tell you. So, I definitely recommend that, although in my course you have access to my Foundations Essentials, which in Foundations Essentials we, um, I, I have everything about painting uh, muted colors, greens. Um, yeah, so let's get back in there with this red. Because obviously my dominant color now are the blues and greens, but we have this happening to make kind of a poppy. Like I've always thought of like when I'm doing poppies, they kind of stand out here. Um, not that these are shaped like poppies, but um, they stand out by... 
um, being next to blue and green for some reason. Like a lot of my poppy paintings, that's what I've done. A little more water. You can get too much paint. Sometimes it's like, I just need to take it all off my brush and not even put it in the water to clean it. Um, so. I think that's enough. This is just meant to be a, um, a study, not a complete painting. We can do the same thing I always do, which is add some marks with my oil pastels. And look at how that just almost pulls it all together to make a finished work. How nice is that? These are magic. I do have an entire oil pastel course too, but I use oil pastels for everything. You can even go into my stories, save stories, and I have a whole lesson on how to use oil pastels, which ones to use, um, how to fix affix them. I'm going to bring some red over here because the eye wants that. Can you tell how much that pulls it kind of this way a little bit? There we go. I like that. It's a little pink. That is a pretty color. Did you have fun today? How about that pushing us out of our comfort zone into a whole different realm than where we were the last few days? And this is still very abstract. I would say the challenge with this is that it's mostly in the mid-tone range. I'm sure if we would change it into, um, you know, uh, greens and, I mean, into grays and blacks, then it would change and you'd be able to see that it's, um, it's a little on the mid-tone level. What about this? Let's get a little bit of pink in here. There we go. 